Hello and welcome to VR Dev Analyzes VR Games. Today we'll be going over the different bows in 12 different games. Longbow, Quiver, Dungeon Knight VR, Vanishing Realms, Sirento, Trickster VR, Rec Room, In Death, Hollow Point, Gorn, Elven Assassin, and Skyrim VR. There's some major differences and similarities, so let's jump in with a quick summary, and then we'll get into the specifics following. A really good bow feeling comes from the audio and the haptics, with the pull audio and haptics mattering a lot, but also having a haptic rumble on the bow when holding at full extension. In addition to that, it feels really good for a release haptic pulse. For aiming, the best aiming system is hand-to-hand aiming. Um, That's used in 11 of the 12 games, the 12th being hollow point using a front hand, bow hand aiming system where the rotation of the bow hand is what determines the direction. For the quest, which is why I am analyzing these, we want to have a restricted pullback. Um, This applies to any inside out tracking device, not just the quest but we want to restrict that to be in front of the face the entire time with the arrow hand. If the arrow hand goes back to the cheek, the jaw, or even the ear, uh, that will cause the tracking to to drop out after a few seconds. The pull and release felt best in Skyrim VR, although it didn't have the audio doing exactly what we would want because that was still based on the base Skyrim game. And it also didn't have the haptics on holding at full extension. Now that we've gone over the summary, let's get into the specifics game by game. Okay, so here we have Longbow. Uh, With Longbow, this is kind of the gold standard on bows. You see that it pulls back to a certain length, and if I stand still, it's... uh, periodic clicking on the haptics it does pull back to about like not quite to the air but pretty close so we would want it to be about there is the full pull on the quest we also have uh, the front hand again it, it messes with the way the bow looks but it doesn't direct the arrow the arrow is the difference between the two hands and that's what directs it for aiming. So, you can shoot. It feels really good. Um, the pullback has a, a sound and a haptics to it, so you can really feel and hear it. It, it works out well. In each lab, you can shoot the TNT, and it, it's really just a great feeling bow experience. If you come and you uh, pull all the way back and then come back, it unknocks the arrow, but that doesn't really matter. It just immediately reappears in, reappears in your hand. So there's no reaching over the shoulder. It's just pull back and shoot. And you can fire really rapidly, but it does kind of limit your accuracy when you do that. But just that, that's just based on your personal movement mechanics. So, that is Longbow. Okay, here we have Quiver, a, a pretty early on bow and arrow game for VR. Uh, it has a pull over the shoulder, which was um, its kind of difference at the time. Again, we kind of have the two hands determining the direction of the arrow instead of the like direction of the, the front hand. You have a nice uh, sound on pull, good haptics. If I pull all the way out, the arrow charges up, but there's no haptics at this point. It's just pointing out. So nice pull, pull action, good release. There really isn't an uh, impact sound, but that's not too bad. If I pull all the way back, right about there, I am well past my head going backwards. So the, the full pull backwards is well past the head. So, let's see, right. 
there. And I would say that's about touching the back of my head distance. Not exactly touching the back of my head, but that's the, the general distance that I'm pulling. So that's way too far. But the, otherwise, the, the gameplay in Quiver is pretty good. You're able to get very accurate shots without trying too hard. So, yeah, a, a, a decent bow uh, game. Okay, here we have VR Dungeon Knight and this uh, cute little bow that is in this game. So pulling back, we got uh, constant haptics when fully extended. And we got haptics for pulling and pulling out. Interesting, all right, so pull. Oh yeah, missing uh Okay, so here we are with VR Dungeon Knight. Uh, this game has a cute little bow. And again, it's the hands that are controlling the direction. If I rotate, it goes a little wonky, but it does it still will fire in that direction generally. Um, the arrows are actually in a quiver. It's hard to look down at it because it's rotating with, with looking down. But you have to pull it physically out of that, that quiver and fire. If I go back down... It will just leave the arrow in the bow. Interesting. That is, uh, no, you can't fire two arrows at once. So the bow is very good on the haptics pulling back. Nice sound. And then there's a, a constant haptics when fully extended. Uh, even though it looks small, I'm actually being... I'm pulling back to about my cheek. So even though it doesn't look like that, I'm pulling pretty far back to do a full extension of the bow. It's definitely much further than, say, Trickster or um, Vanishing Realms. And the, the firing and uh, hitting sounds are not, not bad. The, the pull sound is not the best because it's not as you pull back, it, it gets a little bit of sound each each piece. It's when you go from nothing to full, it does a two second sound bite. So, not the best sound there, but uh, it's a decent implementation. I also like the, the arrow just being held in the bow like that if you put it in. I just put it so that's, that's a neat feature. All right, so here we are in Vanishing Realms, and I have the bow out. This is the first bow that we've had the arrow just knocked and ready to pull in the bow itself, not in the, the offhand. And I think that's mainly because there are other ways you can do the offhand here, and I can't do that. Okay, so... It does require that you drop whatever you're holding in order to actually activate the bow. And it will save the arrow if you don't pull back and release. It's a very slight sound and some uh, clicking haptics as you pull back. Uh, no haptics when the bow is fully extended and going for the full extension is in a pretty good spot. It's a little bit further back than it was in Trickster, but still, it's it's in front of the face, just barely. That's a good uh, release sound and a good impact. It looks like the timer on the bow is just based on when this, this arrow will reappear. So it's not based on pull speed or uh, ability to pull arrows out of the quiver. It's just a, how long does it take for that arrow to reappear. 
So that's a, a pretty good limiting factor. But I don't like it as a design implementation. Like it, it is a very solid DPS limitation. But it just doesn't feel good. It doesn't make the player feel like a badass. Alright, here we have the Sirento bow. What we got is a uh, max pull length that again ties the hands to the direction instead of just the one hand directing which way the arrow goes. If I pull all the way back, I am well behind my head, so that is a little bit much. Really strong sounds on the pull release and hit not too much haptics going on as you pull there's a there's clicks but holding it all the way back no haptics on either controller just going um but in and out you can feel that haptics if i push it all the way together you must release the arrow there's oh no if you get it right there it's not going to release okay so if it's short enough you're not going to have a release. The arrows have a count to them, so that makes sense. There's a limited resource there. It's a little odd with the, the hand not being attached, but not a big deal. Okay, here we are in Trickster VR. So I have uh, the bow and arrow equipped now, and it's you can see it's kind of following the controller, but not exactly with the arrow. When I do the pull back, there's a maximum. Again, it's tied to the hands, and not the, the rotation of the one hand is in hollow point. Pulling back all the way, it's uh, not a very far pullback, which is right about where we would want it for the quest. Pull, fire. We have a, a counter, so if I come back and release, yeah, it, it doesn't actually fire if I go back all the way. Easy to pull back aim. Oh, uh, so pulling. There's a nice haptics to it. Uh, good sound. Good release sound. Good uh, impact sound. And that differs based on the material that it impacts with. It's pretty nice. Uh, if I am fully pulled out, there is no haptics currently going on. Uh, no audio either. So I, th I, th I think I am preferring the, the bows with the haptics on the front hand when it is fully extended. But this is definitely the, the best pull distance for any of the bows I've looked at so far. Alright, here we are in Rec Room and we have the bow for Rec Room. It's got the little sucker on the end just because it's kind of a family friendly game. Um, there's no pulling over your shoulder in this, it's just as soon as you get your hand to where the green dot appears, you feel a little haptics and you can then pull. There's no undoing the arrow, it's not like the, the arrows actually matter in this, so if you undo it just goes. Uh, pulling all the way back feels pretty good. You got the sound of the uh, pull, release. And impact. Press the start button on the scoreboard to play. The pull distance is about to my jaw to get it full pull. So too far, we want it to be about right there, which isn't impossible to play with, but it's a lot easier to pull further than me to do that. It's again the uh, two-handed directional determination instead of just the one-hand directional. I think that feels a lot better. And it goes a little bit less crazy from the rotation of the front hand, but still a little bit. So all in all, it's a, it's a good bow and fits most of the standards. All right. 
here we have the game in death another bow and arrow game I can pull back on the, the with the trigger to fire one type or if we hold the touchpad it goes to a different type of arrow that's a teleport arrow there are more special types of arrows but we're not going to get into that um, one feature that in death does have is if you come back all the way and release it will not use that arrow so if you have special arrows you can cancel that usage which is a nice feature um, it is just as you come to the the trig the string you pull the trigger and the arrow appears there's no uh, pulling it from over the shoulder it's just fire um, this is allowing for rapid fire and not as much movement but uh, with the special arrows that's where the kind of limitation really comes into play um, when we pull back there is a clicking as you pull back and go forward and the sound also is back and forward but we are not getting a haptic rumble when held at full full extension if I go really far it, it's going to point at the hand, but it's not going to uh, go all the way extra like we saw Gorn doing. If I extend all the way, that is about to my ear, so a little too far in the extension for what we're looking for. We would want it to be about here and be at full extension. Uh, if, I, if I do this, actually, I am feeling haptic rumble while just holding. So at full extension and aiming, it looks like there is. But if I'm holding it down here at full extension, there is no haptic rumble in the bow hand. Even like this, there's no haptic rumble in the, the arrow hand, but the bow hand still is getting a haptic rumble. And then a release. Good sound, good feel. Uh, the front hand doesn't particularly matter with orientation. It changes the way the bow looks, but the arrow is going to fly in the same direction. Uh, it's the direction from hand to hand that matters in this game. So this is the uh, feeling for in death. It's a, a pretty, pretty nice bow. Maybe a little bit too far on the draw, but otherwise good. Okay, so this is hollow point. You can see it's a pretty uh, standard bow. Something to note is that it rotates with the controller, not with the arrow hand. So I'm rotating the controller, but the arrow hand is staying still. You kind of see how that performs. I'm not sure if I like that or not. I kind of want, want it to be my arrow hand that's really determining where I point. The uh, arrow appears in my hand if I reach back over the shoulder and then reach forward it's just there I don't have to reach back pull the trigger come out release although that does work so if you're doing that kind of flow from quiver that same flow is going to work in this game um, if we look at the bow a bit more when the arrow is drawn we can go forward and backwards going all the way forwards and dropping drops the arrow it doesn't put it back in your hand um, I would prefer it if you go all the way forward and drop, comes back to the hand. This isn't too much of an issue with a game like Hollow Point, but if you get into other games like Ellen Assassin or Quiver where there's specialty arrows, that tends to be a bit better. So yeah, over the shoulder, pull back, release. Um, now if we look at the haptics, there, there's a pretty good vibrate on the front controller, but no vibrate on the... On the a little bit of a vibrate on the arrow controller. That's, that's pretty nice. So you start, and the more you pull it back, the more it vibrates. There's no audio here. It's just the vibration. And if we shoot into the ground, get a little bit of, of audio, shooting it away, no audio. So that's the, gonna be the, an impact audio there. Um, looks like based on these arrows disappearing, it's time-based, so that's fine. It's not really too much to, to talk about on that. Some games do uh, the number of arrows you've shot. Um, that goes all the way back to like Goldeneye with the bullet hole showing up in the wall based on the number of shots fired. But here we have uh, just a time-based, so I could theoretically load up the floor with arrows. That's pretty cool to see just a loaded area of arrows. 
Um, if we pull back all the way, let's see, uh, arm outstretched. I'm uh, a little bit before my cheek here. And I think that's about right. Especially when we go to the quest, we're not going to want to have a very far pullback. Back to the ear is too far. Full pull being to the cheek is nice. This will change based on how tall your arm, how long your arms are. Um, I am 5'10", so pulling to the cheek for me would be about ear for somebody who is, say, 5'2". So, you might want to even shorten a shorter reach on the quest. Uh, if you're holding really far back on the quest, the controller will eventually lose tracking. You can hold for maybe two to five seconds, depending on exactly where you're holding, but uh, you will lose tracking if you're holding the arrow hand at your, your cheek or at your ear. You want to be a little bit in front of your head. So maybe here-ish for the, for the pull. So that, that would be about right. I'm stretching a little bit and having to like push my shoulder out. It's not something I would do for a long period of time. That's not comfortable. So we want just about that length, maybe a little bit shorter. That yeah, feels pretty good. All right, so obviously here we're in Gorn. Gorn has a interesting arrow management system where you actually have to have physical arrows. Um, and these are a limited supply in Gorn. Um, if we pull back, you get a nice uh, rumble on the front, but it, it's there the entire time. It's, it's not going away if I come up at all. And if I come forward and release, it still fires, which is fine because these are physical arrows. We can just go pick it back up. Um, let's see, if I pull back, it just keeps going. Uh, there is no limit to where this, this boat can be pulled from. So there's not like a get it to your cheek and that's the, the max. It just doesn't max out. And we let go and it goes into the wall over there. Of course, Gorn has its pull yourself around movement system. It's an interesting choice, but you know, it works for the game. Uh, some other things we want to note about this bow. It is uh, driven by the two hands. Unlike hollow point, it's uh, like the one hand holds the back of the bow, the other hand holds the front of the bow, and that chooses the direction. How I rotate my hand in space kind of makes it go weird, but it doesn't actually affect the direction the arrow is going to fly. So pull back, point, fire, and that works out just as you expect. And you can pull the other arrow off of the bow itself, or like you saw from before, pulling it over the wall. There's not really... There's a, there's a sound to the pulling back. It's like a, a leather being stretched against the leather sound. It's not not bad. So you got sound, you have a release sound, and I think you also have a, a impact sound. Yeah, a little bit of an impact sound, not too much of one. So this is the bow in Gorn. All right, here we have Elven Assassin. You can see that the uh, arrow is automatically in the arrow hand, and as you move it close to the bow, it knocks itself. As you pull back, there's a clicking kind of haptic to it. The full pull is right about here, and that's about to my jaw. Not quite to the ear, so a little bit further than we would want. And you can see that it's, it's locked in distance. So we don't have the extra long distance that we got from the board. When I pull all the way back, there's no haptics going on in the front hand. There's nice audio to the, the release, but no real audio to the, the pulling. And there's also a good impact audio. Coming in and out gives a nice little haptic click as you do so. 
because of the format, you can fire really rapid fire, which is, is nice. But it's a, it's a specific design for that. Okay, there was a little bit of issue with the uh, recording for this. Um, but here is the bow in Skyrim VR. Uh, if we look at it, it will snap onto the bow when we get the arrow close to it. And then I can pull back. It's uh, in front of the face when pulling all the way back, which is about where we would want it. Um, and the arrow just immediately appears in the arrow hand once it's released from the bow allowing for very, very rapid um, pulling and re releasing. In fact, no, it's, it's just far enough that you can't pull the trigger and have it immediately fire. Um, the audio and haptics are very nice. Um, it starts out with very light clicks as you pull, and they get stronger and stronger as you're pulling back. Uh, there are no haptics when it's fully extended, so you're just sitting here, no haptics at this point. And release has a nice haptics to it, which I haven't felt on the other bows, and I rather like that. Uh, very sharp, quick haptic on the release. So we got... Um, yeah, nice sound. It's uh, a sound that plays as a sound bite on the first pullback, so not not the best there, but it's not a big deal. That the haptics on this feel really good. If if there was a a rum, uh, haptic at the very full extent, that would have been perfect on the haptics. And of course, the release and audio on the Skyrim bow is amazing. So, get really nice uh, particles and different audio on it as well. So that's all 12 games and analyzed for their bows. Thanks for watching, like, and subscribe.